here everybody I'm gonna be doing a tune-up on a piece of crap well, actually it's not really a piece of crap it's kind of an old bike for how old it is it's actually in pretty good shape but you can tell by the chain here it's just been sitting in the shed getting dusty nasty as hell uh, so just remember always put a bucket underneath before you ever take off the rear wheel or anything else, it's so much easier to clean the chain when all this is on there. And then you can clean it all later. So, we're going to grab our Clean Streak Economy Chain Cleaner. Park makes one. Uh, Pedros makes one. Uh, there's a bunch of other ones. Planet Bike makes one. Um, I don't know. We like this one, the Clean Streak one. It seems to work the best. The clean streak cleanser, I think, when you're in an enclosed environment like us with no ventilation, this doesn't kill you quite as quickly. Quite as quickly. It'll still kill you. Don't breathe it in. And it's extremely flammable. So you're just going to clamp that bad boy on there like that. I don't know if you guys can see that. Press the button. the system. Need too much, just enough. Uh, there we go. Ah, nice and nasty. And before I do anything else, I actually like to go and grab a little bit more thin streak and kind of put another little layer on it. I like to take a rag, of course, and wipe this thing all down, get all this stuff going off of here. Nice, nasty crap there, yeah. And that's after chain cleaner. I remember this thing was pretty dusty, pretty grimy, pretty crappy, all that crap. Yeah. Um, so now, to make sure, I'm going to get the chain links pretty clean to get some of the crap out from in between. Grab my air compressor with my blow nozzle. And I like to kind of run a rag underneath it and blow the stuff off. Look at that, right there. See, I'm gonna do it right on this spot right there. Move it over just a little bit. How much crap I just blew off of that. Look at that. Super quick, super easy. So I'm gonna go right about there. If you're thinking, well, dude, you're gonna get stuff all over the wheel. I haven't cleaned the wheel yet. I do all this first. It's gonna get all over the braking surface, and all over the tire. And everything. There we go. Look how much more crap just came off of that. Wow. It doesn't look like a new chain. A lot cleaner than it was, I can tell you that right now. And I'll also show you guys, this is how a lot of these bikes come in here. Look at, this is actually not bad. Pretty clean in comparison to a lot of the other ones. Um, just clean the chain. And then that derailleur, all that stuff is supposed to be black, but it's so brown from all the grime all over it. So let's clean this stuff up and let's find out how good we can get this stuff to look. Alright? Look at that. Now let's go ahead and get this dang wheel off of here. I already disengaged the brakes. Pull this down a little bit. I got it in the middle. 
Because if you've got the derailleur all the way against the frame, I don't know, it just makes it hard to get the wheel in and out. Pull that like that, boom, drops right out. See how easy that was with quick release? Boom, super simple, super easy. Now most people, they go and they clean all this other stuff up. Well, I'm gonna take a little bit of triflow lubricant. I'm gonna spray a nice little layer of that stuff all over and I'll let it soak in. So that's gonna be a little lube, a little clean all at the same time. Some people think, oh, that's a waste of lubricant. Yeah. Waste lubricants all the time. So, let's blow this off with the blow nozzle. A little bit, in some spots. that soak in. I'm going to give the bike a wipe down. Uh, show you what it looks like when I'm done wiping it down. You have a little bit of cleaning on the brakes here. I don't know if you can notice this one's a lot cleaner than that one. So you have to clean it up quite a bit. A little bit above the frame there. Kind of gone below. Look at all the rust on that shit. Oh, customer come in. You can hear again at this little thing. I've got a piece of some emery cloth here. If you notice how badly rusted this stuff is, when this rubs against this little tab here, actually makes it kind of rough. It doesn't run as smooth. You wouldn't think it would be that bad, but it does. But of course, I don't like gloves on right now. Do that a little bit. Didn't know if you guys knew about there's always a bunch of grime that's on these pulley wheels. I don't know if you can see it when I pull this off of here, but see all the nastiness that just kind of comes grinding away off this thing right here. It's pretty nasty. Well, of course my boss hates it, but I usually use this little flathead screwdriver. Um, I should probably be using a different one, but I'm lazy right now to have to go and get it. But I'll roll the chain forward, and I'll actually put this right here, and I'll let it scrape all that crap away off the, the pulley wheel like this. Wow, look at all that. Boom, see? Now that side's got a little bit of nastiness to it, but if I do it from this side too, it's going through and scrape off all that dirt and garbage. And that's been like packed on there. So somebody rode this and it got mud on it and then they just let the mud dry. And it became really thick when it added into the stock lubricants that were on the chain in the first place. Okay, I think I got one pulley wheel pretty clean where the teeth are. Now this one over here is going to be collected even more and the, the wheel is more covered by the chain. But you have an exposed area here and an exposed area here. So you can utilize those little exposed areas just like that to kind of get all the grime out of there. Remember, I've only cleaned the chain a little bit. I haven't lubed anything. I'm just trying to clean all this garbage out from pulley wheels here in this rear derailleur. No, it's not a high-end rear derailleur. It's a replacement we put on there a few years ago, but that's how it works. So that's the thing. That's how I scrape all that crap off. So 
Let's move on to more cleaning. I'm gonna show you something pretty classic, what I see all the time when these guys come in here with these bikes. They think they know how to put all these washers on properly on these ding brakes, which they don't at all. You notice the brake pad is just sitting there flopping around. I mean, on the back ones, you can probably see there's actually the right kind of spacers there. And it actually has the right spacers in the back. This one, absolutely no spacers in the back whatsoever. And that one's backwards. They actually got two of the flat and no concave or no convex washers, only the two concave washers. Oh, they got a convex washer there, or dome washer, whatever you want to call it. I call it convex washer. And then they put another washer in between it. And there's nothing on the back. Jesus. Not only is it bad on the brakes. I don't know if you guys can see this dust that's on here, man. It's, dude, it's, <laughs> it's on there. I scrape it off with my nail underneath here. Dude, it's, it's caked on, like literally caked on. Look at that stuff. I don't know what that is, but that is nasty. Hey guys, I'm still working on this dang bike here. Been working on it pretty much all day. Just people keep bringing me in flat tires all day long. And this guy has already called three times and wasted at least 45 minutes of my day just making sure it's gonna be done today. That's as much time as it takes me to work on the bike. So please, if you're a consumer, you wanna take your bike to a bike shop, let them work on it. If they say they're gonna call you, they'll call you. Please don't keep calling and hounding them. I know we're impatient. I know we're in a society that sits there and says, oh, I can just push a bunch of buttons on a keyboard and I can have it at my house the next day. Sorry, be more patient. Human nature doesn't work that way sometimes. Well, I've got most of this tune-up done. Got the bike pretty much together. I just need to fasten up the front wheels. And if you notice, I actually have the proper spacing now because beforehand they were not proper at all. You just didn't have any washers at all back here. I used his nut and stuff just because I'm not going to give the guy a new nut. Um, but all that came out and it's actually looking pretty clean. Um, remember how dirty and nasty this thing was earlier. Um, actually looks pretty good now. You can actually read the labels on it. The chain is actually not brown. Um, and you can actually see the word Altus on there. I was about to try to sign off on this bike here. thought it was all done. One thing I forgot to do. forgot to clean out the shifters. And if you notice that the bike's on the other side of the stands because super busy yesterday and had to cut everything off and now I'm coming back to it for a second day <laughs> actually uh, it's been the stand three or four times already so let me clean out the shifter show you what it looks like on the inside here show you here the little screws that I got right here I these little tiny little little screws I don't want to lose these little things and see, we've got these mats on the floor that have all these little holes in them. They're really comfortable. <laughs> and they actually catch most stuff so it doesn't bounce underneath the cabinets and stuff. And so I'm going to take my finger and I'm going to pull on that thing just like that. And then uh, on my stand, I have these little cups here. So I'll go ahead and put them right in there. Let me do the. Sorry. Not paying attention to the camera, trying to pay attention to the tool here. The tool is trying to pay attention to the tool. So yeah, you take these things open until you start feeling the thread really loose. And pull it off very. And what you do is you drop the thing on the floor, just like I did. 
Most guys do that. Sometimes what I'll do is if I have both hands, I'll actually take both screws and kind of like leave them in there and try to pull the whole cap off at the same time. Uh, let me see if I can show you that from a different angle. Well, thankfully enough, you got one of these magnets here. So I found that screw that I dropped on the ground. That's why I love these mats. It just kind of hops and then just, just sticks. It doesn't bounce anywhere. But you kind of have to see what direction it goes into. So, but uh, kind of look right here how the way the front one's built. The rear one's built a little bit differently. It's just a little dirty. It's actually not too bad. Go ahead and spray it out with some lubricant and blow it out with an air compressor. Check it out. It should look pretty clean. So, looks much, much cleaner. Yes. It actually works much, much, much better. It clicks much better. It was actually not clicking very loud. I'll go click just a little bit. And then the second one, I didn't want to grab right here. You can see that little pulley piece in the back there, that little silver piece right in the dead center there. That's a little clutch piece. Um, it sticks. You don't spray it out and get all that grime out of there. That bad little piece sticks right there and it won't let you shift. Nice. All works now. Cool. I'm going to see if I can show you that I can actually get this thing off without losing any of the screws. <laughs> so, just in case, I'm gonna go ahead and put my hand underneath there. Still dropped it. It's right there though on the ground. I know exactly where it is. I see it. All right, just wanted to prove to you no matter how many years you do this, it, it, you still do the same thing over and over again, man. It's kind of crazy. Okay, I was gonna show you guys here on the shifter. I haven't cleaned it out yet, but see how it kind of, it latches pretty easy right there. You know, if I go really quick sometimes, see how it doesn't catch it? You see how now it wants to come back and catch it? See, it wants to catch it. Every once in a while, if I go a little too quick, or if I do it every couple of times, oh, see, look at it. it. See, it went right past. So that little clutch mechanism or down inside there, from the manufacturer, it's got a bunch of lubricants inside of it that gum up, <clears throat> get all nastified and solid and it doesn't act like lubricant anymore it acts like gum um i think it's more of a rust preventative than a lubricant um kind of have to maintain that stuff you got to keep it nice and fresh so let me clean this thing out and see if i can get this thing to not slip oh look at that look how far it slipped man that thing slipped like three gears see if i go up see if it'll catch another gear oh see it caught another gear go up up, up. Okay, caught another gear. Yeah, see, it, it like slipped two gears, man. Look at that, bam. Look how far it slipped down. Wow. Let's take care of that right now. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I don't think I should be making that noise when I'm doing that. But, man, it's so fun to do. give you a little tip here because it's got a lot of slack in this cable here so we're gonna need to of course take some of the slack out of there but I don't really want to do that because actually I actually kind of set right where I want it where it's out just a few threads so I can either go in and give it some slack or come out and take some slack out and it's got this little nine millimeter nut here um, a lot of people me myself being guilty of it for many 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 years 
used one of these things. Sorry, I'm reaching through the frame there. It's a little Y Allen wrench. Well, this twisting action on your wrists is really, really bad. And I've got bad carpal tunnel from doing that from too many years. So I've now gotten out of the habit of using those and using Allen wrenches like that to actually break things apart. See, these are the tri Allen wrenches that everybody uses. Um, I use that for adjustments and stuff and kind of getting things tightened up. Because I know I don't need to over tighten with those. But these, I don't know how tight this thing is. So use my little 9 millimeter wrench here and make sure I break that nut loose there with that. And then I'll probably come back with the Y wrench to do my adjustments. And then if I need to make sure it's really torqued down nice and tight, I'll come back with this and give it that extra little bit and take all the pressure off of the wrist because it's really bad. I've actually got an assist on one wrist and both my wrists throb every day and have to take glucosamine. So don't do that for too many years because then you'll be just like me with these hands that are just rough. All right, so safety first and then everything else after that. And if you're going to tighten this up a little bit, when you turn it, we're gonna, it moves the derailleur. That's not good for the pivots, so I, I like to, if you're going to torque it down a little bit, hold the derailleur real quick and just kind of give it a little snug. You don't need to torque it down with a torque wrench, just, that's, that's about it, man. That's all you need, not too much. Take the slack out of the cable, just shift the shifting real quick from there. Look at that, it goes from gear to gear to gear, every single gear now. See, now it's not going down as easy, and like I said, that little adjustment screw back here. You have just a tiny bit of slack. Bam, bam. There we go. All right, let me check the front derailleur. <clears throat> well, we got our front derailleur right here. A little adjustment screw on this Shimano derailleur. It shifts. Okay, let me get that in the middle and the rear. Make sure it's in the middle, because that's the best place to check it. Eh, it doesn't go down as easy as I'd like it to. Pretty easy. Yeah, I just see it doesn't like coming off from the middle to go down. So there's not that much slack in this cable. It's actually kind of taut. Um, there's not much slack in the adjustment screw on the handlebar on the on the shifter itself. Barrel adjuster. <laughs> Sorry, drew a blank. There's a barrel adjuster on the front shifter. The rear shifter is on these do not. The rear derailleur does have that. So just wanna since it doesn't want to jump down that much, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna loosen this up with this wrench because I've already pre-loosened it a little bit before. And it doesn't look like there's much cable sticking out from here. So I want to be very, very careful. I don't pull that whole thing out of there, man. Because whoever had it beforehand had cut this cable off right here so it doesn't stick out whenever they shift it up. Because the cable sticks down and it'll go whoop, 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 whoop. And then as you're crank arm goes around, it hits the crank arm as it goes around. So some people cut them off, you're actually supposed to cut them off just short enough so it doesn't do that and you bend them out of the way. But, you know, teach his own. Now, I'm gonna take these two limit screws here and I'm gonna adjust it down to go 
No? A little bit. So now the screw itself is a little frozen. So I want to make sure that I actually use a flathead screwdriver on these screws because it's got a flathead slot and a Phillips head slot. Putting the Phillips head slot, you're more likely to strip it out. Do the flathead one, and this really does not want to turn too well, but I'm getting it to turn, and I think that's all I need. And then I'm going to physically bend the cage just a hair that way with my fingers. Let's see what happens. There's quite a bit of slack in the cable here. I'm going to get rid of some of that slack with a few turns at the barrel adjuster on top. Let's see what happens now. Still goes in the middle. Oh, yeah, look at that. Just a little bit. That's all she needed. Cool. Bam, 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 bam. So. Okay, just showing you the final product of the bike here on the floor. Um, took it for a little spin, it works just fine. So, that's it, man. If you guys wanna check more stuff out, check it out.